you very much, Cynthia, for joining us at Millennium Live. It's lovely to see you. Thank you for popping by our New York offices. I'm sorry it's a bit grey today, but at least it's not raining. Yeah, it's very blue in here, though. It's nice. <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? But we're going to jump straight into it, get straight started. You are one of the top personal branding experts in the world, listed in 2017 by Entrepreneur, top 50 marketers on Snapchat by Mashable, and most influential women in business by Tenfold Research, just to name a few yeah. of your accolades that you have. So why is personal brand so important? Uh, personal brand is important because it separates you from what you're doing. And I think with all of this innovation and technology and the workspace and Slack and we walk around and there's advertising and how you can work more and be sort of, you know, the, the cog in the wheel. Um, and people are now in a situation where they have to make either lateral moves or quit to get job, uh, you know, changes in their job or raises and um, without really understanding that you are the person first, the job is second, mm -hmm. uh, and that describing and explaining and teaching your expertise actually makes you more valuable wherever you go. Uh, and that's why to a person inside of a company it's very important. I think on the other side, you have this new generation of people that are coming up and not seeing that personal branding is really just structuring how people see you online. And everyone says, well, I don't want to put out you know, this fake fa this facade of not who I am. But you wouldn't show up to a job interview in ripped jeans and flip-flops. Uh, these people are searching for you online. And so it's really, the way I see it, the evolution of your resume. And mm -hmm. without it, you just have a really messy resume. <laughs> Yeah, it's so true. Like it's, uh, we're currently hiring in the marketing role at the moment here in Millennium, and we are actually searching everybody we look for, at minimum checking their LinkedIn profile, but if not, yes. just checking out what they're doing on other spaces as well. So what advice would you give someone looking to build their brand and influence online? First thing I would say is search yourself and, uh, and figure out what is already out there. What's, what is out there that you don't want there? So that picture from college or you know, whatever it is, um, and figure out what you're using each platform for. So uh, after you've done the cleanup, go, all right, Facebook is for family, Instagram is for, for business, and focus the content and set your security settings appropriately. Once you've done that, you need to tell us what you're, what you're trying to change, what, not what you're trying to influence. Influence is, is actively being able to change someone's perspective on something. It's, it's, you walk in and they go, oh, that person said something I've never heard before. Um, so in marketing specifically, if you want to change the way people use Snapchat, you want to change the way people use the internet, you want to change the way uh, ads are looking or how they're being placed, that's what you need to talk about in an effort to change the way people are either doing or thinking about those things. Um, instead of approaching personal branding as, this is me and I'm packaging myself. People want, they want to know that you're out for them. And in order to really hone in on that message, mm -hmm. you have to focus on what you're trying to change. Yeah, it's like an, almost like an element of authenticity to it. Yeah, Instead of just exactly. being about yourself, it's about what the other person sees. It's what, yeah, yes, because without the person or people you're influencing, you don't have influence. So <laughs> um, really focusing on how am I impacting this either you know, group of people or type of person. Um, but yeah, lay the foundation and then have that clear focus. So this is a question we like to ask all marketing experts that we speak to because there seems to be some discrepancy in a definition, but what does brand mean to you? Brand is a label. That's what brand means to me. I actually wish there were a better way of describing personal branding, but that is how it's known. I actually see personal branding as removing brands. Uh, branding is, okay, you know, for instance, three months ago, if you wore Nikes, you were a an athlete maybe, or you just like Nikes, who knew? Depends on what you were wearing and how in tune everyone was with mm -hmm. it. Now wearing Nikes is a very different message because Nike has gone down this political arena, they've split their sides, that's branding, right? You're subscribing to a certain type of mm -hmm. thing and you're letting the world know that you, that you do. So personal branding, it's saying, this is what I know, this is how I feel about it. Yes, I'm the right person for the job, look at everything I've said about it. Um, and that would be the more of the personal branding side. Mm -hmm. So now you don't have to necessarily carry an Apple product or have the latest watch to look like a tech person. People just know you are because of you mm -hmm. <laughs> as an individual. Yeah. So your first book platform is yeah. coming out next year, published February? February 5th. So exciting. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about it, like a sneak peek for our viewers? Absolutely. So a uh, platform is, got, it has two elements. Uh, the first being why 
why personal branding, what it means, because I'm trying to reach out to the real expert, the person that says, man, that guy on stage does not know what he's talking about, but won't challenge that person, mm -hmm. won't become the person on stage. Uh, I want to reach that audience and say, this is why it's important, because if you are the expert and you allow someone to go on and, and create false statements and become this talking head and you don't step up and say something and you're actually the only person who could interfere, if something goes wrong, it, it might be your mm. fault. So saying nothing is just as much of a choice as saying something, yeah. right? Um, and then all of the how-to elements of the book will actually be available uh, online. And the reason is that I started writing this book two years ago. So two years ago was a very different landscape than now. Mm -hmm. This, we're talking digital primarily, and in digital, things are changing. I didn't want to write a book that said, this is how you do something, and it, it be outdated. Mm -hmm. uh, so each section will describe why to do something, and then uh, there'll be an online element that I'll update regularly. Yeah, I like that you're actually giving people like a how-to as well. Like when you read yeah. a business book, and yeah. it just sort of says, this is why. It's like, okay, but how? Like how, right. how do I actually implement this in what I do and who I am makes a big difference. So what made you decide to write the book? I would, there's a couple of things that, that happened. Uh, there's a story, this woman I spoke with, she is amazing. She's had worked in the White House as a, she called a careerist mm -hmm. um, through the Clinton administration, the Bushes, wow. and uh, she worked then through the Obama administration and left um, recently. And she was saying, oh, you know, this is insane. All of these things are happening. I'm like, well, you're the real expert. Like, go to the New York Times, call CNN, you know, step mm -hmm. up because you know more than everyone. And you have this, you know, unbiased middle ground because you've worked through different, uh, different sides. And she said, oh, no, I can't do that because I'm a careerist. And I was like, okay, well, then you're allowing the world to fall apart. <laughs> I can't sit back and let you do that. And she said to me, she goes, you know, I never thought of it that way. And I don't think I, until that moment I thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, the next day she wrote an op-ed, and it was on the New York Times. She's on CNN all the time, and she's having real, actual impact. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, wow, there's this huge group of people that no one's reaching, to, no one's reaching and explaining that it's okay. You're not, like, it's not your ego that is coming out when you're doing these things. You actually know what you're talking about. Mm. Uh, and so I really wanted to reach into that crowd, which is very similar to the Millennium Alliance people. These are some of the smartest people in a single room that you could be in, managing huge budgets and huge brands. And as you know, marketing, there's responsibility that comes with it. Yep. Uh, and those are the people that I personally want to hear from. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I wrote this yeah. book. It's kind of always easy to be the person sat at the back, not waving their hand in the air. Yeah, doing all the work. Yep. The one that actually knows what's going <laughs> on. Like, I want those people to be feel, to feel good enough or um, important enough or validated enough to really make that change. Yeah, empowering them to make yeah, That's awesome. So what was the biggest lesson you learned about yourself during the experience of writing the book? I learned that I do have a short attention span when it comes to writing a book. No, um, <laughs> no it, I learned that uh, it was interesting because I would what I cared about and then what I had a hard time writing about uh, and then realizing that if I had a hard time writing about it, I, I was also having a hard time reading it. So I had to start over and there was a, definitely a lot of self-evaluation and looking internally because mm -hmm. I would I mean, I threw away so many pages. I wrote it in three months um, and then went through revision after revision because, again, it's marketing and a lot of the stuff no became outdated. The same. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that, that was one. The other thing I learned was that, man, I put a lot on my plate at once because when I tried to find the time to write it, mm -hmm. I realized, oh, I have to basically quit everything that I do. And that took me a week. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so maybe I should slow down a bit and focus uh, and take a lesson from what I'm trying to tell people. Would that be one of your biggest pieces of advice to anyone looking to write a book, is to sort of give the time to it? Oh, yes. Because at the end of the day, your name will be attached to that no matter how it comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's really, really important that it's given the attention that it needs uh, from the be very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and that you have advisors. Find people that have written books. Find people that know you and send them chapters and say, is this even me? Like, what is this? You know, and get, get their feedback. Uh, because it's can also be a very lonely road uh, if you're not someone who's used to just like 
I mean, it's a lot of just you saying things. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's important to get the fe- yeah. get feedback. Perfect. Well, I, for one, will be reading it in February yes. when it comes yeah. out. So I'll make <laughs> sure I have my copy. But you're also co-founder and CEO of Bell & Ivy. Mm-hmm. Um, on the website, you sort of highlight three main areas, digital marketing, personal branding, and storytelling. Mm-hmm. So how do you find that these elements work together in the digital landscape that we're in today? Of course, so is for personal branding, again, we're going after the, the executive and the founder, the investor, the person that knows what they're talking about and needs to get into certain rooms to achieve certain goals. Uh, we look for people that are, uh, we're very selective and, and want to be honest with personal branding because we're looking for people that have something they're trying to change, impact, right? What is it? If it's you want to become famous, you're not our client. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm all for it. It just not, it doesn't work with mm-hmm. us. Um, so we like to bring on those people, look at the economics of their business and say, okay, how can we leverage you to achieve these things? And are we really making a difference or are we just helping distract you from your job? That's how mm-hmm. we approach it. Um, and for on the digital marketing side, which is really sort of the bread and butter of the business, right? Um, in digital, we, you know, building websites and search and social, I mean, that is very human. That's mm-hmm. where the personnel branding, we call it, comes in. Because people want to see real time, real people, real businesses. Um, if you have five star reviews, but you're the person that ran, runs the front desk hates her job or his job, then you, that shows through. Mm-hmm. So you want to really empower within and, and highlight those people in those areas, get stories written about them, great for SEO, social media, so on. Uh, and then the storytelling part, that element travels through both. Uh, but we actually recently acquired a PR company back in April. So our storytelling capabilities have grown quite a bit. Um, and I, you know, I understand PR from a digital marketing person's perspective, not mm-hmm. as much a like PR is very hard. So I'm glad I have that team and their expertise. It's, you know, 20 years of experience and, t- mm. and clients. So yeah, it's nice you combine that sort of idea of personal branding, but also like enterprise branding. Because I think a lot of executives yes. think <laughs> enterprise branding is the most important and it's really a marriage of the two in a way. Absolutely. It's, you have to, I would say uh, there's that thing, you know, content is king. But if he's the king of an empty, like, <laughs> you know, what I mean? there's no, if no one sees the king, does he exist? I mm-hmm. don't think so. Um, and, and that's really exactly it. Like you have to look at, all right, what are you the king of? Where's, you know, here's the executive and here's this and and meshing the two together, especially if you're looking at it for the purpose of, of goals related to the enterprise itself. Mm -hmm. If you're only focusing on the founder or the executive, well, you also just gave them a ton of leverage. Um, and companies are fearful of that. Don't be fearful of it. Just look big picture. Mm -hmm. And, and think it through because you, there's a lot of value in having that person be happy in the face mm-hmm. uh, and then making sure that it's equally distributed for that next person to come up. Because there's always a next person if, you're, yeah. if you've created a successful business, there will be a next person. Someone right behind you. So you've had a very diverse career, worked in lots of different industries, but obviously mainly in marketing. So over your career, how have you seen marketing change? Well, uh, let's see, social media, for instance. Mm-hmm. I, I used to get made fun of it, these events. You know, I'd go to search events and they'd be like, well, we make actual money. What do you do? And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, and then live streaming and the need for instant communication because it's honest. Mm. So people relate instant. Uh, so adding to your story and your Snapchat and your live stream. Like, yes, it's content and, and so on. But what it really is, it's, it just feels real. Mm. It feels like this company or this person's telling me something in real time, which means they can't be lying. They can't say, oh... Uh, Alex from Target. Well, you can, there's a million Alexes working at Target right now that are actually employees of Target Mm -hmm. that go and use these social media uh, channels to talk about their day and the companies can really access that and and tell a bigger, better, Mm -hmm. more authentic story while also keeping their teams and their employees engaged. So I think that that primarily the um, instant Mm -hmm part yeah. yeah well we talk a lot about digital transformation at our events is kind of the theme between yeah. what we do and it's always tough to predict and at every event every industry is looking at one different element of what it could be what it could mean how it could eventually yeah. work but there actually is one certain thing is that social media has changed how we communicate yes that that's true i think in the general mm. uh digital marketing has changed how we communicate you know uh, one of the founders of google says the internet will be everywhere 
That is the direction. That's why we're talking to things now. Um, I was staying with a friend last night and her husband started yelling at the ceiling and I was like, was he okay? <laughs> and no, it's just that's where they put their, their Google, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like their the little, Google, Google Home, Google yeah. home <laughs> product. I was like, okay, we're good. Uh, but yeah, no, the internet will be everywhere. And so we have to start really thinking about how people communicate not only with each other, but with yeah. those products and online and how they want you to communicate, be communicated with. Mm-hmm. Um, and when is it too much? So yeah, that's yeah. really the biggest change is we have to think every minute of the day. <laughs> well, innovation truly drives business. So where do you see the challenges lying in innovating or revamping a business as we head into 2019? Uh, Red tape, teams that are too big, uh, that's all internal. That is culture, right? It's very much innovation comes from preparation and the ability to accept the innovation and then trust that your your team is going to plan ahead. And what's happening is people get to know each other and they're like, well, you're not innovative because I know you, and Mm -hmm. right? You're not innovative? Cool. So I'll hire this other guy. And then that person becomes unhappy. And so it really is about uh, preparing and hiring for innovation mm-hmm. and actually trusting that those people can pull it off. Um, not you know, really listening. Again, Google is the greatest at the way they structure their teams. Uh, 10 to 12, the two pizza meetings, uh, they you know, change up the team every six months. It, that is important because it can get stagnant very quickly mm-hmm. and being stagnant does not help innovation succeed. No, well, if anything, it does the opposite. Because exactly. people get bored, then they're not innovating. Okay, so where do you see the future of digital going? This is a tough question. <laughs> yes, uh, to Mars. No, um, I think it's going to be, like I said, it's just going to be everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, it already is in, in that space, but people still have somewhat of, some control uh, over what and how they're using these products. Mm-hmm. That is going to go away, which puts more responsibility on the marketer and on the company itself, because with Alexa and home products and you know, you're, you're setting the temperature in a room and then you're getting into baby products. And then, you know, as that grows, there's less of the consumer's involvement in their own life. Mm-hmm. And that is a scary thing for a marketer because you're putting these products in their home. Yeah. So the evolution is that we're going to trust it more. And so now there needs to be more responsibility on the other side. Um, and the free flowing communication is what will sell things. It'll you know, oh, I need diapers. And then they're just going to deliver. It's just going to show up, probably yep. before you even said it. Mm-hmm. That's the, the future. Next yeah. step and how to market that. And how to like market that without making it sound scary. Because yeah. it could be very useful. Also, it's, quite, it's almost quite <laughs> yeah. impactful in your life if you're doing everything from essentially what's yes, robotics and, it's, and it's, AI. Yes, that's, like, cool. that's innovation. You're making a change that someone wanted. Mm. But if you, uh, I was in live stream in 2012. The company I was with, they had about 10 million registered users. They went under because live stream, no one knew what to do with it. <laughs> now it's the thing. Yeah. So it takes time and the right kind of communication. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the storytelling. Yeah. So as we head towards the new year, is there anything else you're very excited about in 2019? Obviously your book platform, but is yeah. there anything else you're looking forward to? Oh yeah. Well, I, I mean, our company is growing. I'm very excited about that. I did, I just got married. I'm excited to feel like, see what that's like, you know? <laughs> Hey, <laughs> um, there's there's quite a bit yeah there's quite a bit going on I, I think it's all it's all very exciting but really my team you know building a company is a scary thing you're putting a lot of trust in so much growth you put so much effort into um, figuring out what to do and so much trust in people and the early stages it's a lot of trust yeah uh, but when they pull through 99.9 percent of the time they do and the 0.1% is usually your fault. <laughs> um, it's an amazing feeling and it's, it's great to see what people are capable of. So 2019 will be uh, another year of growth for us. That's really exciting. So we obviously couldn't have you here without asking you about your role on the Millennium Alliance's advisory board, oh, which we thank you very much for being a part so. of. So what are your hopes for the Millennium Alliance and how we work together in the future? Well, one, it'd be great if there was an event in LA, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the Millennium Alliance is at the... Uh, I think at the core what our company hopes to achieve, putting the right people in the right room to make great things happen, mm-hmm. uh, telling the right stories about those people. And I have to say, being on the advisory board and seeing how it's changed over the years and the people that have come through and how 
they've worked together. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity for uh, finding people that, that attend or are on the board mm -hmm. to create interesting, cool campaigns and projects together, which we've seen happen already. Mm -hmm. Um, and also just having a conversation with someone who knows what you're going through because these people are at the top mm -hmm. of what they're doing. They're very smart and uh, they're smart enough to know they don't know everything and they show up and they're vulnerable and they tell you exactly what the problem is and hopes for a solution. That's the most amazing environment in the world to be in. I mean, I literally couldn't have asked for a better testimonial. Really, this is why you're on our advisory board, because you're so good at it. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank it's been you. a pleasure to have a chat with you, and hopefully we'll see you on another episode of Millennium Alive soon. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> thank you, Cynthia. Thank you.